And for many years, they've been trying to take me off the air. But now we've been sustaining under incredible frontal assaults, backstabbing assaults, every assault you can imagine. And I'm not a victim. I'm not an SJW. I am extremely pleased uh, and uh, very happy to be in the position we're in. Uh, I, I personally uh, don't, don't like some of the pain. But as Glenn Danzig once said, I don't mind the pain. Because if it brings me to a better outcome of where I need to go, I'm ready to do it. But, you know, the pain of submitting to the globalist is much greater than going with the pain of resisting them. But still be forewarned, my friends. <laughs> I don't mind the pain. But the way of avoiding pain leads into entropy, leads into collapse. Now, the reason I'm more confident than ever is that everything we've predicted, everything we've broken down, everything that we've covered in the giant global spectrum of news and information is so damn on target. It's just uncanny. And that's really what matters at the end of the day is that humanity have a choice to make about which side they stand on and what they want to do. And then if people make the wrong decision, that's okay because the decision is more important than even the destination. You've heard the journey is the destination, and that, that really is true, isn't it? Now, that said, we have a spectrum of news because I've been up working since 5.30 this morning. 5.30. I almost over-prepare like this when I'm on fire. It's, it's, I've been working since 5.30 this morning. I'm not bragging. It's, it's the truth. Actually, 5.15. I'm on the crapper. I'm working. I'm cooking food for my kids. I'm working. I'm throwing my baby up in the air. I'm, 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 I'm always working. But I've been really working since 5.15 this morning. And I've got a very, very clear picture of what's going on here. When we come back from break, I'm not going to do the normal thing where I mention some of what's coming up on the broadcast because it's all important, but none of it is as paramount as communist China openly threatening to attack the United States. By the way, I know you guys gave me like four copies of that when I printed it. It's a Zero Hedge article. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. When you got like 200 articles in front of you, it doesn't matter if I've looked at them all five, six times a day and read half of them, scan the other half. It just turns into a tornado of information. And then I kind of know why the average person doesn't want to spend all their hours researching this because you're either in this game of total war for humanity or you're not in the game. Because it really is true that life is war. And everything intermittent between times of war is nothing but preparation for the next war. And if you don't realize that, well, you really don't realize how the universe works. Because what is war? We think of war as tanks and troops bombing each other. And but no, war is struggle. War is competition. War is the exercise of what works best. And when you remove war... You bring in a stagnation that is the final war of extinction. So I seek to end physical war, but I seek to augment and intensify daily war, both ritualized and real, to have an amazing year of being directly over the target and predicting the launch of nationalism worldwide, the rebirth of populism, and that the globals would try to kill the economy and that they would try to collapse our borders. We're proud to be here telling the truth. We're proud to be here standing firm for this nation. Now, I have a lot of incredible stuff to break down today. I'm particularly prepared. You could say I've been in fuego lately when it comes to research. I was researching at midnight last night. And I was up at 5.15 researching. Because there's a quickening happening. So before I hit this whole constellation of news and incredible illustrative information, let me hit the number one story first. Then I'll get to the traitors 
while this country is in such an incredible existential battle for all our futures that are working against this country at this critical time, it's just flabbergasting. It'd be one thing to be working for another system of you're just a sociopath that was giving you more power, but this destroys you. But it's, it's part of the mental illness. As usual, I talk about Drudge Report and Matt Drudge being really smart and doing a great job. But man, Zero Hedge, and I do know who runs it now. Most folks don't. <laughs> and it's just so on target that I sleep good at night knowing there's other people out there that get it. <sighs> now, because you'd think this would be top story on the New York Times, the Washington Post. I saw this this morning. And I went, wow, let me type that into Google and Bing. And there was nothing being said. And I said, well, I don't just believe Zero Hedge. I said, uh, not that they're bad, but Ronald Reagan said, trust me, verify. So I searched what they said. And guess what? It was in the People's Daily. It was in the official statements of the Communist Party of China. And, and in fact, I'd seen a lot of this in the last week. The dictator for life, Xi, saying, he'll, hey, we already took over Hong Kong. We'll invade Taiwan, which we have a defense agreement with. And what's weapons, including high-tech anti-aircraft and anti-ship. And that was a whole story in and of itself, that he's threatening, oh, I'm sorry, not just to invade Taiwan and meeting at the big communist bureau with live video feeds with them chanting, we're ready for war. It's on newswars.com, infowars.com right now. There's almost no U.S. media coverage, and if there is, it's pro-Beijing. <laughs> I mean, it's like this one story, I could do 10 hours, emergency broadcast on air, oh my God, look at their weapons, look at what they're doing. But let's just get into this one piece of news. Our border collapsing. China and the EU trying to kill our economy. Trump valiantly battling under attack, internal and external. How could you not have your heart skip a beat when you know Trump's for your own interest? And now they're trying to kill the economy. It's just, it's just, it's crazy is what it is. Because this should be cut and dry. So, Zero Hedge, Tyler Durgan. In landmark speech, Xi threatens violence against Taiwan. And I didn't just believe this. I went and read it in the damn commie newspaper. Demands peaceful reunification. So he says, we're ready to invade Taiwan. We're ready to blast U.S. forces. We're ready to invade wherever we want. He even said we're going to take islands and physically hold them that in 2,000-year-old maps, the Chinese never even laid claim to in the Philippines. Oh, I'm sure the Filipinos will roll over to that. I'm joking. Didn't go too well for the Japanese. So this guy is on his power trip. And let's go through this article. Him at the meetings, the videos, the show to TV viewers, because he's up there with all of them lined up in their weird black suits and everything. And you read these quotes by him, and he says, we've already taken Hong Kong. We're going to take Taiwan. We'll use forces if we need to. Our militaries are based there. If the U.S. tries to block us and he lists these islands that are down in Vietnam and, and off the coast, we're talking like hundreds of yards off the coast, of uh, the Philippines, that we're going to start attacking U.S. ships. So here's the announcement. The dictator who heads up a communist dictatorship that's killed five times what Hitler did is threatening to preemptively invade Taiwan and attack the United States, and that's not the top story in the United States. It's a billion, 400 million people. They've got thousands of nuclear weapons. They've got missiles that can hit us because Clinton gave it to them. And he's on television. Let me, let me show you this article from Zero Edge. Again, my printout didn't do it, but if you scroll down, it's not just him here. It's them all with the military standing and him in the middle. And, and it's got his videos and his statements. I spent two hours today checking all this to make sure it was accurate. Two hours! And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying the average American better start getting what's going on. They've been shooting at our ships. They've been attacking our submarines. And, man, in some cases, they're 800 miles away from China. Now, there's the photo. 
And then he goes over and does a video newscast threatening to preemptively attack the U.S. I mean, this is like way past the Cuban Missile Crisis. This is insane. And there's almost nothing on our news. It's like, well, Trump screwed up. You know, Xi will deal with him. And I read Reuters. Yeah, Xi was at Davos again. They're all behind him. Well, thank God Xi bought up Hollywood. We'll, we'll beat these American upstarts and we'll beat these. This, I, mean, I, I read it in their policy papers. The uh, professors go, there's a crisis in America led by Trump and Alex Jones and people like Tucker Carlson. And we're going to, working with other partners like Juncker and Xi, we'll stop it. I mean, it's like the stuff out of a science fiction comic book. But this is Hollywood. This is the universities. They literally romanticize China that is the most racist, hateful, murderous country on earth. Chinese people are good on average, but I'm just saying, towards the lower class, towards anybody that isn't Chinese, oh my God, it is the craziest Stockholm Syndrome I've ever seen. And that's just one story in our repertoire today. And, you know, Trump could be a jerk, which he's not. And if he was standing for our sovereignty and our jobs and against the, the Chicom threat, I would stand with him. But instead, I cannot believe that, but you know, you know what it is? People put their finger in the wind. They go, and they go, okay, well, we got Hollywood. We got the EU. We got the big banks. We got this. The public's weak. We got China. We got everybody else. Trump's going to go down, and they have all these globalists threatening everybody and that's in his administration and threatening his supporters. So they all get kind of get scared, kind of, well, maybe we shouldn't support him. When the threat is these lunatics running things. The They've said, prepare for war. It's unbelievable declaration. So people need to stand by and be counted and decide whether they're for America and freedom or with the biggest mass murderers in history. This is getting insane. And uh, ZeroHedge.com, InfoWars.com have it posted with all the insane links. But here is the bombshell of bombshells that we're going to show you live on radio and TV right now. For TV viewers, you'll, you'll be able to see this. For radio listeners, I'll describe how you do this. Let's pull up Google live on screen right now if we can. You've heard how Chinese began to make fun of the Chinese dictator because he sounds in Chinese like Winnie the Pooh. Oh, hello, Christopher Wobbin. That's how they think he sounds. And they are Chinese, and they think that Winnie the Pooh sounds like him, and he sounds like that. That's a death penalty if you talk like Winnie the Pooh. Oh, Christopher Wobbin. Oh, Tigger. Ha. Oh, I'm Tigger. Well, earlier last year, 2018, the Taiwanese flag couldn't be seen on any iPhone devices as a emoji so they're removing basically symbols of language now that'll probably replace the alphabet as emoji soon well here's the new big breaking news that our own crew has discovered as of january 6 2019 let's put it live on screen you can type in g threatens violence on taiwan g this g that but you can't type in g evil or a bunch of other terms. Go test it for yourself. Google is actively censoring search engines in America and in the West and then going to Congress with Sundar Pichai a month ago and saying we don't fix any search results when their own memos show it. Look at that. So blow that up on screen. We don't need me on there. Go full screen for TV viewers. You can type in Xi Jinping. And Confucius and Taiwan and concession speech and Winnie the Pooh and trade war. But you put in evil Xi Jinping. And we were testing a bunch of other terms. It doesn't exist. Return to sender. No such number. This is the technocracy's power. This is insane. This is dangerous. And Google and Apple have all moved there and giving them the code keys. Oh, oh, there's a really ridiculous story out. I'll get to later. Apple plasters privacy ad on Billboard near Las Vegas Convention Center ahead of CES, big conference. It says what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. No, it doesn't. It all goes to the cloud. And a year ago, they moved to China and gave them the code keys of the government and said we're now state-run to be tax-exempt. So what you do on your iPhone stays in Beijing. Wow, that, ladies and gentlemen, is incredible.
That, ladies and gentlemen, is insane. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was done in live time with you watching. <sighs> Covered a Texas Monthly, carpetbagger publication to come here and control Texas. On record, anti-gun, anti-family, totally anti-Republican. Cover story with nothing but lies about me and my family. But I don't see that as, oh, my God, I'm on the cover of a magazine lying about me. I see that as I'm a faithful American that stands up for what's truth. So they lie and say a bunch of things that I hate the U.S. military. And I said the U.S. military is coming to kill Texas in 2015. There's no video. There's no text. There's nothing. And they say all these other lies about me because they know I'm a faithful, good American telling the truth. So I don't see that as, you know, how you take it. And had a few family calls. I was in Walmart and... I saw Texas Monthly with you on the cover of it. It's just, well, how are you doing? I mean, I'm doing damn well. You think George Washington wasn't on the cover of magazines in uh, England in 1778? I'm not comparing myself to George Washington, but, you know, if you're not on the cover of the enemy's newspaper, then you're not doing your damn job. I did, I'm not playing games here. I'm not trying to social climb. I'm just a common censor that's like, wow, the chai comms are threatening to totally destroy us. We've got all these enemies that hate America. They tell lies constantly. I'm not putting up with it. All right, that's my breakdown on the China thing. It is incredible. 1.4 billion people, their governments killed, undebated. The Chinese government admits this, five times what Hitler did. Hitler's a bad hombre, bad, bad person. I almost don't exist because of Hitler, both my grandfather's Army Air Corps. That's why when I see the news, Jones is like Hitler, and they don't look, well, show me how I'm like Hitler. Did I work for Hitler like George Soros? Oh, no. Yeah, there's a lot of graphs out there that show which dictator was the worst, and uh, yeah, it, it goes at the end of it. It goes Hitler, Stalin, Mao. That's, that's accurate. And, of course, then they killed tens of millions after he left. The Chinese government publishes books saying they killed 115 mil. The CIA says it's 97 mil. I don't know who's right. You know, it's kind of like, oh, 97 mil, 115 mil. Stalin said one man dies, is it's a tragedy. A million dies is a statistic. See, I don't think like that, but that's they know the public does. It's like they'll take one person that dies and make it the ultimate whatever happened. Like, I'm not a Serb, but the U.N. even admits that the Muslims in Albania started the war, the U.N. funded it, double the Serbs died, that Croats or Muslims died. But our government did two wars, bombed them with DU, killed a bunch of people to turn over a third of Serbia to Muslims. And then the official accounts are the Muslims started it and they killed double and did the Serbs do some atrocities? Damn right they did. I'm not defending it. But it's like this, it's this weird thing where, here's an example. This poor little black girl last week got shot in Houston. And the news said it was a white guy. And they said, oh, my God, white supremacist out and all this stuff. And then uh, Saturday, they busted the guy, or he admitted to doing it. He's a black guy. He thought it was another drug dealer car. And th th this today, a day later, they, the news just said, oh, the killer's captured. And I kept looking, like, where's his name? Where's his mugshot? I had to go to local Texas news in Houston to find him being arraigned and brought in Saturday. And here he is, and blackout on the news. No pun intended. Because the leftist media had the narrative that an evil white man was out killing black people, and they were going to say it. And when it turned out to be a black guy and a case of mistaken identity, they weren't going to cover it. They weren't going to touch it. They weren't even going to retract it. And once it became a big issue, they went, okay, mistaken identity, let's just kill this thing. I don't care if it's a white guy or a black guy or a purple guy or a polka dotted person that kills any child. I care. Isn't it that simple? Even if it was a white guy, what, he's a crackhead, whatever. Why'd they originally say it's a white guy and he hates black people? Because that's the narrative. All right. All right. I've, I've hit the big China news. When we get back, we're going to look at the next level. And by the way, we're going to break some major Elizabeth Warren news. Global exclusive. Be on U.S. news. Nothing. We'll be covering it here right through the evening, or obviously tomorrow with the weekday show, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. And, of course, David Knight's had a heart attack uh, and uh, does a great job and he's gotten a couple stints in. He'll be back in a month. He wants to come back. We're really welcoming him and tell him to take as much time off as he wants. We've got a lot of great co-hosts.
covering things 8 a.m. every morning until I come on at 11. They get the war room with Owen Schroyer and his uh, other host that uh, co-hosts with him, like Roger Stone. Kind of a who's who of the resistance and who's being targeted, obviously, because we're effective. <laughs> Figured it out yet? I work with who is effective, who tells the truth, who isn't afraid, who's fearless. Because I am afraid of fear. All right, let's uh, get down to it. Let's illustrate the Democrats' new technique. We know it's race baiting. We know it's class warfare. We know it's them telling us how great Venezuela and Cuba is and or how Europe is collapsing and how great it is. But now we have Alexander Cortez coming out, and this is all over the news. I mean, I, I wasn't even going to cover this till earlier today. I, was, I had the television. I was watching CNN. It was like, did you hear the Republicans say that women shouldn't be able to dance? And I've seen these headlines like, Alex Jones believes women can't be doctors or lawyers or scientists. Uh, I never said that. I believe women are incredibly smart. And if women want to be in those roles, more power to them. They shouldn't be forced out of traditional feminine roles. But it's all over the news. I've got a bunch of these clips where she puts out these cooking videos at her house that are canned. And then Elizabeth Warren copies them. And then... Uh, Pedo O'Rourke copies them. I'm sorry, it's not Pedo. It's uh, Beta O'Rourke. Beta O'Rourke. You know, the, the guy they're going to push for president does it. So it's Warren, it's Cortez, it's him. They're clearly all trying to run for president, even if she's too young under the uh, constitutional amendment. She goes, oh, it's because it's, it's anti-feminine or whatever. No, it's it's men and women can't run to the 35, ladies. Just, okay, that's, that's, the, that's the law. It's kind of smart. I don't think you want a president that's 34. It's, you kind of do want to have some seasoning here, but okay, whatever. I sure as hell know this. I was smart at 35, a smarter and in business in life, more successful than most 80 year olds. But I'm at 45, I'm, man, Alex Jones at 35, I'm 10 times smarter than that guy. I can't imagine what it'd be like when I'm 70, but I guess your brain starts going, so it kind of balances out. But in my prime, baby, at 45, you know, 40 to 55, 60 is your prime. Alex Jones at 35 was a dumb son of a bitch. Sure, he was smarter than most people and had a lot of big trends and broke a lot of big news and had courage, but I'm not that guy. I'm Alex Jones at 45. So, yeah, Cortez, you shouldn't be able to run the president until you're 35. I think that's smart. It's a little scary to have a 35-year-old president. It'd be scary if I was 45 in president. Uh, I mean, I kind of want that. Now that I know how much more knowledge you get and the way the world works and how you just go through more things and figure stuff out, the seasoning... It's not good to have a 72-year-old president, isn't it, who's got stamina. Like, he's a bull, he's strong, and looks young. That, that even makes it better. But it's, it's, he's figured a lot. Like Trump even said, two years of campaigning, I'm a new person. Like, before I liked God and I was a Christian, but I really like God now because he had experiences that happened. And, I, and by the way, I know those are real experiences, but I want to go off into some Trump speech. Let's get to Cortez. Imagine the PR. Let's have cookouts together. Yes, look normal like we're normal people. Try not wearing $4,000, $5,000 outfits, lady. It's okay if you have those. Just stop saying wealth is bad. And then, you know, it's like the grandson of Phil Castro has been caught with his $5 million yacht and $4 million helicopters and $10 million jets and $20 million castles in Europe. And he tweets it and Facebooks it. I'm going to cover that later. And people are like, dude. Cubans are starving to death and they have nothing and they don't even have, they can't even, well, where'd you get all this money? He's like, oh, I got it from Fidel. They have no sense. It's like, if you're Alexander Cortez from a rich family claiming you're a bartender and all this crap, you don't want to wear $2,000 shoes, a $3,000 jacket and $1,000 pants. I mean, I'm wearing an $800 jacket and when I got it, I felt guilty, but it fits my fat ass and I do it. That's what tailor jackets are like. Most of my jackets are 400, 200 bucks. I mean, the point is I'm not like tweeting, oh, look at my yacht, or which I don't have, or look at my big expensive shirt, but look, I'm digressing. <sighs> Cortez, let's be clear, comes out and says, and the media says, Alexandra Cortez is being attacked everywhere because she danced. She did some stupid video we're going to show you with, with, with Footloose audio over it. If you're a radio listener, I'll describe it. It's on Infowars.com or go to Infowars.com forward slash show to see it. She does this video, and then I look today. No one criticized it. No one. It's very cringeworthy, though. I mean, it's very stupid. 
And then the Democratic Party goes, Republicans are mad that women are dancing. Are these Republicans that got in the time machine and went back maybe 50, 60, 70 years to the smallest town, say, in Oklahoma? The Republicans I know are the life of the party compared to Democrats. They're a bunch of nerds. A Republicans party, baby. But the thing is, it's not true. So imagine the weird 80-year-old people that run the Democratic Party are like, say they're afraid of girls dancing and want to ban dancing. That'll get us the liberal vote. And so they just say that this Navy SEAL who lost his eye, he's afraid to dance. So uh, Dan Crenshaw to Cortez, dancing not scandalous, but your tax hikes are. So let's go ahead and go to the little uh, footloose piece where they're literally making it up that Republicans are upset by her dancing the jig when no one looked at it and no one cared. This is the level of fraud. Here it is. From the oldest of times, people danced for a number of reasons. They danced in prayer, or so that their crops would be plentiful, or so their hunt would be good. And they danced to stay physically fit and show their community spirit. And they danced to celebrate. And that, that is the dancing that we're talking about. Yeah. Aren't we told? In, in Psalm 149, praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let them praise his name in the dance. Amen. Amen. And it was King David. King David, who, who we read about in, in Samuel. So th this was and, and, some and what did liberal do? thing. What did David do? In the 80s, <laughs> Republicans were banning dancing. Before it was very Lord, small. With all his might. Puritan groups hundreds of years ago in like Hawaii. Leaping and dancing before the Lord. So this is left. Leaping. Just claiming that the, the right wing wants to keep us from dancing. Now we want to keep the left from uh, teaching our five-year-olds how to Ecclesiastes move on Assures us that there is a time to every purpose under heaven. So this is the playbook of the Democrats is the time to laugh. claiming that Cortez, we, by the way, she looks a little better with some weight on her there. I think she's an ugly looking born. and bug-eyed. Looks like some weird praying man. Is, is, like she's on drugs is. now. That girl on screen, Cortez dancing, is good looking. That girl could be president someday. So, so this is what they come up with. That Republicans are mad. Oh, by the way, the latest thing we come back. Not anymore. Just to illustrate it, See, is critics bash dance. homophobe Mike Pence our way for uncomfortable behavior, swearing in bisexual senator. He's smiling, he's being nice, and they just make it up knowing you'll hear it on radio or hear it on TV. It's just, it's all fraud. It's like, did you hear a white supremacist kill the black girl? It was a black guy. They know it. CNN covered it up. I like women. I'm married. I got four kids. And so women that like women, I kind of get their taste. And I'm not a I'm a Christian. I love God, but I'm not up here, you know, judging people, any of this. And that's why they have headlines everywhere. Alex Jones hates lesbians. Alex Jones hates both. Well, I don't care if you're heterosexual or homosexual. You're trying to get in schools with five-year-olds and teach them uh, how to be a different sex or how to, you know, give a fellatio. I think your ass ought to be in prison. And that's what the Democratic Party's doing. You know, I, I'm against pedophilia. <laughs> so get that through your head. But the only, we got such big, huge news here. So it isn't about Alexander Cortez and the Democrats and the big talking point this weekend that Republicans want to stop women from dancing. And they use some comment on a message board. They probably put themselves, oh, look, someone said Alexander Cortez shouldn't be dancing. It's just a stupid video of her dancing at the Capitol. That, can we play that for TV viewers? Very cringeworthy. But it's cringeworthy. She looks like a praying mantis, those crazy eyes. I think she's on drugs, personally. So, so, oh, my gosh, she does some stupid joke. I mean, let me copy that video. Here it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's like a joke dance by an actor in Caddyshack, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, where he's acting stupid. I mean, it's kind of cool because it's so dumb, but they go, oh, my God, the Republicans are scared of a woman dancing. Oh, yeah, and then it's made up. And it's like, what mindset do these Democrats have, the ones that are calling the shots, 
that they think, like, it's dirty dancing or it's, it's like other movies where the Christians try to stop people that are all made up anyways. Let's tell them that men don't want, Republicans don't want women to dance. And then you think, wait a minute, Nancy Pelosi's older than the Hills. You've got all this going on. And you look at the weird PR they come up with, and it's the same crazy stuff like they're back in the 1930s or something. Where, where Pelosi you know, heard about some school somewhere where they didn't let people dance. And then like today, it's like, let's show them we're hip. Yeah, they're trying to stop Cortez from dancing. What? What? We're trying to stop you from selling out the last jobs and signing over to the chi -coms and taking our guns and aborting the babies, you dumb witch. But see, that's what they do. So it's all going to be just these little things where they go, anything they do, it's like, did you hear? Pence was really freaked out and super uncomfortable when he swore in this Democrat woman who made it a big deal that she's bisexual. It's like, by the way, I'm bisexual. Oh, my God. Oh, we better vote for you. It's not about your policies. Like, by the way, I've gone down on a lot of chicks. I'm like, I have too. Does that freak you out? I mean, it's like, oh my God, well, vote for me. It's like, Pence was freaked out when he met Jones because Jones had gone down on, I mean, it's a family show, but this is what they inject. Actually, I've never had sex in my life and I just dreamed about it once. <laughs> I, the truth, you know, guys that brag, it's never true. It's like, uh, listen, I'm a Quaker. I'm a, a, a little, I'm a Puritan. No, seriously. You watch Pence, he's actually attracted to her. I've watched the video like 10 times. Like, hey, how you doing? And she's a young, good looking woman. <laughs> he swears her in. He's doing this all day, just getting it done. The media, USA Today, everything. It turns it into, did you see that homophobic piece of crap? Wow, that little sweetheart carpet muncher came up there, and here he comes right at her viciously. He is the biggest devil we've ever seen. Critics bash homophobe Mike Pence for uncomfortable behavior, swearing in bisexual senator. And again, the point is, it's all a fraud. No one cared that she was in a dance video. No one made an issue about that the woman said she's been with women. But that's what's perverted about it, is they're obsessed with sex. What are perverts? They're obsessed with sex. It, 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 it's like... They come up with this PR, and it's about sex, sex, sex. How about the economy? How about our children? How about a future? How about not having toxic waste? How about going after GMO? How about all the stuff going on? But instead, it's the Democrats all day. I'm this color, or this is who I have sex with. At a certain point, like, okay, cool, that's who you have sex with. Just leave my kids. No, we're not going to leave your kids alone. And so Mike Pence is so uncomfortable. I watched this video now like 10 times. I just played it five more times. For radio listeners, you're missing it. He looks more comfortable than usual. Mike Pence usually looks real uncomfortable, real uptight, you know, straight-laced guy. So let's play with audio for the viewers this incredible homophobic event. And I'll describe it for radio listeners. Here it is. To the thing, that you take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which you're about to enter. So help you, God. Thank you. Congratulations. That's uh, very humbling. More than I could tell. Really is. So congratulations to you. Look forward to working with you. Okay. By the way, I gotta give it to her. I mean, most Democrats, Republicans look stuffed shirt and weird. Democrats look like they escaped from a lunatic asylum. She's a pretty good looking woman and seems to have her act together. Uh so I'm ready to vote Democrat right now. Anyways. I don't get a date with her. I'm married. Uh, the point is, is that, but, but they're going to say we edited it. That was unedited. Can we play from the beginning? Because we, we had a little computer problem. Can we play this unedited? Just back it up there 30 seconds. I want to watch them walk up. He's totally gracious, totally nice. And, and again, you're like, well, this is a petty issue, Alex. Why cover it? That'll be in the comments. I'm supposed to post the video at Infowars.com. I know it's petty. That's what I mean. Oh, my gosh. Cortez is dancing. The Republicans are upset. It's made up. Oh, my gosh, he hates her because she told people she'd been with women. It's like, who tells people that anyways? It's, it's, it's like, I, by the way, I've been with women, so I'm really cool. Okay, great. Did you save kids from a fire? Did you write a cool book? Did you write a nice song? Got a great restaurant? I might be into you.
you know, well, if I wasn't married, you look pretty hot, lady. But the point is, I don't need to hear all day about how, you know, it, 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 it's, so, so let's play the, this is the big scandal. This is the, and again, it just shows the, the total hoax that, are, is the left totally insane or they think we're insane? Where they put this out that here is the homophobia when obviously Pence, who's a straight-laced Christian guy, is uncomfortable around, around a woman that's one of his peers that's good-looking. There's a little tension there. That's normal. He obviously likes her. Any idiot could look at this video. He doesn't care what the hell she did with, you know, Sally Rotten Crotch 20 years ago. Here it is. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. My great honor. Thank you. I think I've sounded clear to work Where should I stand? What is this? Well, let's, why don't you stand? You'll be right. Could we get a spouse? No. no. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> So if you hold here, put your right hand in the air, and you'll be in And Pence obviously is attracted. Okay? <laughs> it's not that he's uncomfortable, because I've watched a lot of Pence videos. Thank you. Okay. He's showing more interest normally than he ever does, not even been around Trump or anybody. No, I'm, like, I'm sure Pence's wife probably watches and said, honey, uh... With your right hand raised. <laughs> I think we know that uh, Mike Pence is heterosexual by watching. The, the, the real headline is, Mike Pence turned on by new female Democrat senator, Kristen... You take Cinema. Freely, without any mental reservation. And he just throws her on the desk right there. I mean, I'm sorry it's a family show, but that's the takeaway here. He just throws her right on the desk. All right, let's shut this down. Okay, so I already covered China threatening to attack U.S. forces in the South China Sea and to invade Taiwan. Not even on U.S. news. Total freaking worldwide crisis. We already covered uh, all sorts of insanity. But the next hour is coming up, and I'm going to get into... Inmates eat holiday steak during shutdown while prison cards go unpaid. Buzz grows with flying cars ahead of major tech show. MSNBC host says Trump's wall is a monument to white nationalism. Fidel Castro's model grandson runs around in his billion-dollar lifestyle, freaking out commies. Goldman Sachs is up to it again. And so much more today. And then I shot a special report that's just now been completed that we're going to air in the last two segments today that is powerful and hillary opened a pickle jar to prove that she has this incredible prowess anybody knows about pickle jars or jalapeno jars or anything can every 30 40 times you buy it maybe once a year twice twice a year or you try to open it and you got to bang it on the table whatever so when i tried to do the test i couldn't open it at first it's kind of embarrassing this is like will you have to be a, I, I was like oh i have two other cans or two other bottles or two other jars i got it right the third time so i could open it well, Paul Watson, I'm already foreshadowing tomorrow. We're going to break this tomorrow. Put out a thing about how fake Elizabeth Warren's uh, little cooking show was. She copied Cortez and Pedo O'Rourke on. But we caught her in something big that will break tomorrow that's just as big as Picklegate. A little foreshadowing. Tomorrow's news today. But first, uh, here it is. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get me um, a beer. My husband, Bruce, is now in here. Oh, my husband just happened to walk in. I have a husband so relatable, right? Um, you want a beer? No, I'll pass on the beer for now. We don't usually drink beer. What are you doing? So, hey. this is my sweetie. Hello. Um, he's... And I'm oh, crazy. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. I'm glad this you're here. This convinces me they're like wearing uh, rubber suits. Why are you thanking your own husband for being in your house? <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> Yeah, that Bosnian war criminal looked more comfortable taking a swig of poison. She makes Mark Zuckerberg look human. Quite the accomplishment. How do you do, fellow kids? I am your new highly approachable candidate eager to share a beer. I'm going to get me... Um, a beer. I'm going to get me a beer? Yeah, you're an Ivy League professor, Elizabeth. We know you don't talk like that, so stop insulting our intelligence. Elizabeth Warren's trying to act like a normal person, pretending to be something she's not. Now, where have I seen that before? But wait, Native Americans and alcohol? Probably not the best idea. Um, hello? Uh...
Looks like when you buy your parents their first iPhone for Christmas and they realize it has a camera. Uh, uh, oh. The future of politics is seeing out of touch elites trying to connect with the average people they lost by doing cringe-worthy live streams of normalcy while appearing like psychopaths. <laughs> Look at these scum filth. I mean, my God, help us. Robots of the corporates. These are just the front people. They hire people just like them because they're scum, they're empty. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> How long before Warren whips out the hot sauce? Hot sauce. And in case you missed it, she also has a husband so relatable. Obviously hasn't f***ed her in 25 years. Also, did you know... She has a dog. So relatable. Oh, and she also has a husband. I'm Elizabeth Warren. This is my husband. Bruce, come on. Okay. Look, my husband. And a dog. And this is Bailey, uh, who will be eight we months old from your planet. We have husband. husband. We have dog. So I am human. Wait. Not What's invader this? for us. I mean, literally, this is like an alien invasion. Oh, it's okay. She's one 1,024th a woman of color. Elizabeth. You're a 69-year-old multi-millionaire Harvard elitist. This beer. video has less authenticity than your Native American heritage. You're not gonna out AOC AOC by awkwardly chugging a beer. You're such a f***ing hoe. I love it. Billionaires See, and big like corporations decided they wanted more of the pod. Now she's a shriveled leftist, though. By all these corrupt groups by radical Islam, by Hollywood. I mean, I'm just honored to be here. But I'm going to break down for you here in just a moment. Some really heavy inside baseball. I'll do it at the start of the next segment. On how this country stands on the knife's edge right now. On the head of a pin. I already covered some pretty epic stuff last hour, but... I also got into just the weirdness of the of the of the twisted follower class that the contorted soulless left has recruited. I mean the weird stuff they come up with and the formulaity and the centralization and just how they do it it's like Watching Elizabeth Warren and 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 uh, Pedo O'Rourke, uh, I'm sorry, Beto, Bevo O'Rourke's his name, carpetbagger down here in Texas. Watching them try to act human and go, "Here's my husband. Here's my dog. Look, I drink beer." And they like open the beer like it's an alien. How do they know? The, 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 actually, the Battle of the Bulge, there was a famous case where Heinrich Himmler and others had trained, gotten a bunch of Nazi commandos trained to go behind enemy lines and to then pose as Americans to sabotage stuff. But they'd go, hi, guys, we're here to get some petrol. And the U.S. regular GIs would just kill them. So they've been told, look out for Germans posing as Americans. There's famous Hollywood examples of that, reenacting it. But, hi, guys. Hi. We'd really like to get some petrol. Ha, ha, ha. And the, the GIs would just, they'd be German officers dressed up to, you know, get behind enemy lines. And it's like hers, like, here's my dog. Here's my husband. Look. I open a can of beer with a flat top with my knuckles up. Oh, it's so good. Never fear. We're here to help you. And it's like, okay, they're not space aliens, but they're the most compliant corporate university Harvard shills that will just do whatever they're told. Take David Hogg. I never talked about this a few weeks ago, but let's talk about it now. He failed trying to get into four universities, and then I was reading the news, it was, it was like six more. So he tried to get into 10 universities, and his scores were that of a lobotomized monkey, in my view. I mean, they were real low. He was almost on the short bus, and I feel sorry for him for that. But it didn't matter, because Harvard let him in because he's an establishment hack.
Oh, they won't let Japanese in. They won't let Chinese in because they'd be the whole university because they study the hardest work hardest. They actually said in a Harvard internal document came out last year in a lawsuit that Asians have a low human score, a comedy score. They're basically retarded. I don't believe in that. You know, my sister's Korean adopted. She's Americanized. She's just as funny as I am and awesome. It's those cultures over there where it's very competitive. That's what it is. But imagine if I said Asians, you can actually type this in, lawsuit, Harvard documents, Asians have low human score. So they can do all the math and do all the whatever it is and pass it. But Harvard says they're subhuman. Oh, and it's like, oh, of course you are. Because all the weird white leftists and black leftists and Hispanic leftists that are picked up by the globalists should put in there to be the new politicos. They know how to bend over and do what they're told. They know how to go be in the little social clubs and play ball. So along comes David Hogg and dun, 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 dun. he, with his super low grade point average, that I was looking at, it's like the lowest ever let into Harvard. They don't let poor Appalachian white people, they don't let poor Alabama black people that have the government shooting them up with syphilis. You know, I think those, they might deserve a little, what do you call it, affirmative action. You ought to have a certain percentage of the school that tries to bring in, you know, people that have been disadvantaged. I kind of get that as an American. I kind of get the idea, but see, it's not about that. It's about bringing people in and politically controlling them. And David Hoglet. A lot of times I'll see news and then don't cover for a month. But David Hoglet, Mr. Anti-Gun, Michael Bloomberg spokesperson, he gets to get into Harvard at the lowest test scores they let in ever. Because he's David Hogg. Ah, ha, ha, yeah. And I don't want to let a black person in Harvard just because they're a Democratic talking point. But, you know, it wouldn't be as bad as that chicken-necked actor. Oh, the shootings happened, but they're in the acting club. He's an anti-gunner. He's picked 3,000 kids. They ignore. He's picked four kids to go tell us, we're the kids of Parkland, and you turn your guns in, damn it. And so his reward for crapping all over everybody is that all these other universities just saw his scores and who he was and said, no. But Harvard said, David, we've got a place for you. You read off talking points. You do all, you call for gun confiscation. You call for Alex Jones to be taken off the air. You are numero uno. David Hogg. Hell, it's like Obama got a peace prize when he was president-elect, and he launched 10 wars. I think they ought to give them all just honorary doctor degrees from Harvard, because Harvard already is a worthless joke degree. It literally is known as the, the Harvard Mafia, but I'm digressing. I'm sorry. You know, I said I had all this news, and boy, do I have a lot. And I was a good, good person. I, I covered a lot of it in the uh, last hour. But we're going to uh, get to the real meat and potatoes. But I want you to know this. Tomorrow, unless I, you know, get abducted by a weird group of right-wingers that a band dancing like Cortez says has happened. It doesn't exist, but whatever. Maybe it does. Unless that happens, I will reveal the next level, the next twist in Elizabeth Warren fraud. This is as big as Pocahontas Gate. By the way, demographers, geneticists were shocked that the average American, no matter where you're from, if your ancestors got here before 1900, you're about 1.3% Native American in genetic test. We only have one side of the family that even tracked it, and I'm 6%. Six and a half percent, because my dad's 13 percent, just on that 
Comanche line. And I got a few other things, but I, I'm like, oh, I'm royal. I'm never American. I mean, I'm not upset with it. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I'm kind of more proud of some of the other genetic lines. There's some interesting things. We'll leave it at that. But I'm proud about Native American heritage. You know, if you got a, you're going to be a Native American, being Comanche is not, not the worst thing. The most badass group there is. But the problem. This Elizabeth Warren thing just got worse than I even thought because we're doing analysis of it, blown up and in detail. And believe me, it just, it just it's going to seem petty when you announce tomorrow until you pull back and go, wait, it shows how fake she is. And this is the kind of thing like Picklegate that is going to blow up in her face big time. So, and by the way, that's in the news. Everywhere she goes in Iowa, you, they're like, what about how you say you're Native American? And the average American has 500 times the amount you have. I mean, she's so damn white. Let me explain. Asians invaded Europe over and over again. They came over the land bridge to, to America. Almost everyone in Europe has, quote, Native American. They have to ask, do you have Native American or Asian background? They just call it either or. It's the same thing. And... They just play on the ignorance. It's insane. It just shows what a fraud she is. But whew, tomorrow, big news, weekday program. You're going to want to see this. Now, illustrating how they just made up that somebody was saying that Congresswoman Alexandra Cortez was dancing and everybody finds it upsetting. No. Actually, it's enduring her earlier video before she looked like a meth head. Pretty good looking piece of congressional Op operator before she turned into what looks like a sea hag meth head but i digress no one knows no one says who made up this thing that dancing's banned by republicans it just sounds like some weird fever dream by some 90 year old david rockefeller but fox news gop scalise shuts down twitter debate on taxes with Cortez, after radical followers allude to Virginia shooting and say, we need more snipers to take you out. So they're the ones everywhere constantly pushing that. Now let's move on to this. Inmates eat NBC News. Holiday inmates did not eat NBC News. NBC News reports. Inmates eat holiday steak during shutdown while prison guards go unpaid, which is a good point to add here. We don't want the EBT cards to not get their money fulfilled next month. We don't want, but, but like old people, people I know, the IRS claims you owe taxes. They take people's houses. They have heart attacks. They die. Republicans get targeted by IRS auditors under Obama and, and MSNBC and CNN go, good, you deserve it. So they try to humanize all this when they're the ones targeting everybody, when they're the ones involved in all this political stuff. Here's more. Millions could face severe cuts to food stamps due to government shutdown. What would you do if the government collapsed like Venezuela? You'd eat your dogs and then you'd starve to death. Over a thousand die a week in Venezuela. But they don't, but the government doesn't let you say they die of, of starvation. And they're all trying to come up here, and if we don't give them free stuff, it's our fault. Airport security screening, calling in sick, I mean, government shutdown. Well, thank God you leave the border open, you bring in the radical jihadis, and then you say all of us got to go through naked body scanners and put up with all this crap when you know it's nothing but a federal power grab over transportation. I don't hate the average TSA person. It's time for Congress to reverse all this and start the profiling. Hell, they profile conservatives and ban us all over everything because we're not anti-American. Why the hell can't you profile foreigners and say they want to kill people? And then we move on to this. It's not just the prisoners eating T-bone steaks while the jail guards don't get paid. Daily Mail, Fidel Castro's model grandson. Oh, they're all models. Shows wealth through European vacations on million-dollar yachts and jets and airplanes and big palatial palaces and all those bimbos. People are like, wait, Fidel Castro, he just, you know, he, he, he didn't even eat. He just breathed the air. He just, no. Cuba's collapsing. He killed over a million people. He's a monster. They all take their money to Spain and Switzerland. That's what the globalists do, whether they're leftist here, like Bernie Sanders, who has three $1 million houses and drives $115,000 Audis. He made his money swindling colleges and stealing con 
people's bank accounts. These are hardcore criminals. And they mean business. White people do not know what it's like to be poor. Eh? These are, he did his honeymoon in the 70s in the Soviet Union where you could go piss on Christians. He's a monster creature who, when Hillary stole the nomination for him, he stood down. Walmart and heirs are worth $142 billion. We need to take that money. Well, the Walmart folks did the Chinese slave goods and sold America out. Big made in America flags, nothing's made in America. They got their own problems. But what about the Goldman Sachs and trillions? What about the big banks? What about the selling of our industry? What, that's the cause, and you sit there and don't say a damn word about that. I want to help the workers. If you let me take over like the Bolsheviks, you will all get a chicken in every pot. All lies. All fraud. All garbage. But the good news is... They thought they'd censor me. They thought they'd block. They can't do anything. They're only tanking Facebook and Twitter and Google by trying to block with keywords every conservative, every Christian, every nationalist, every libertarian. While they go before Congress and say nobody's being censored. And it's a joke. I'm on hundreds of radio stations. I'm on hundreds of TV stations. We have Infowars.com. We have Newswars.com. We have the best, amazing activist audience of warriors of every race, color, and creed who bleed red blood and who love justice and the unborn and God and understand America's not perfect, but damn it, it's under attack because it has certain ideas that threaten these elites. And they're thanking their local radio stations for picking us up. They're becoming sponsors locally. They are spreading the word. They're telling their email group. They're hand texting to neighbors and friends and family about stories on Infowars.com. They're getting the word out, and they are unstoppable because they understand that. The globalists thought they'd spin this web, this whole hoax, this whole curse, this whole spell that everybody hates us and we're fake and Jones is done and he's over. And I'd go, oh, my God, I'm over. CNN said so. I'm not over. I have only stepped in the last year into true spiritual dominion. I have never traveled in waters like this in my mind, in my soul, and politically. I, I, I actually, I sh I, I'm actually fear God more than ever because you enter this level of strength and, and vision, and it, it's 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 very humbling. <laughs>
And I went, wait a minute. So by then it was about 5.45. I had a cup of coffee. I'm sitting in there at my desk drinking it in my underwear. And I start thinking, something's wrong here. So I'm half awake. What's going on? I spent 30 minutes trying to find out the name of the guy. Why didn't they tell me? And, of course, once I go to the local news, it's on every Houston TV channel a day before. Him being brought into the police station, him being brought in to be indicted. They didn't waste time on this. You know, the, ju the judge was there on Saturday. And I went, oh, my God, this is one of the best examples of fake news. And the whole national media working in concert. All the local news got it right. That after a week of them thinking that an evil white supremacist because the national news had said that, had killed this little girl and wounded her mom and sister, that it was a black guy who came in and admitted that he had done it basically uh, with others, uh, part of a mistaken identity. And it just, it was incredible because to watch the national media work in concert to keep everybody in the dark was just insane. And they did it because of this. 90 plus percent of Blacks that are killed in this country are killed by other blacks. In Chicago, it's over 95%. And whenever a poor black person gets killed by another black person, it hardly makes the news. But when you do have cases, rare cases, but still horrible cases, of white supremacists going in churches and shooting people or things like that, the media hypes it up like it's the end of the world to create racial and cultural division. And so that's why this had been done. And so Sheila Jackson Lee and CNN and the new Black Panther Party and all of the media for a week had gone with one of the composites of people they saw at the convenience store. Yeah, they saw this white guy with a hoodie. They saw other people. But the media ran with that narrative and then picked that up, and we had the headlines all week long. Here's a Time Magazine headline. Fatal shooting of seven-year-old black girl outside Walmart sparks hate crime fears in Houston. Here's another one. Why the death of seven-year-old black girl becomes a national story about race and violence. Thousands of these articles throughout the week. And then on Saturday, when ABC 13 and other channels report on what really happened and that it was a some type of drug gang and mistaken identity of this car, this poor little girl and her family were in, well, the national media can't have that. So they just hoped Saturday and Sunday morning that you didn't notice. So it was just the scene in headline, okay, the man has admitted that he was involved in it and it was drug related and that it was mistaken identity and we found uh, Jasmine's killer, but let's move on. Because they didn't want to admit that they had said it was race-based and basically try to make every white person in America feel guilty like they were a bad person and make the mainstream media look like the good guys using this poor little dead girl. Huge rallies with thousands of people out there basically saying, we're going to find the white supremacist that did this, and we're going to make sure he gets punished. You know, I wish black folks, and everybody else for that matter, would get upset about the millions of black people that have been aborted before they ever left the mother's womb or any other baby that's being killed for that matter. I wish they get excited about 90 plus percent of the black people being killed in this country are killed by other blacks. But when that happens, it's not an issue and it's not a problem in any community. I don't know why. I don't know why then when a little black girl gets killed and some of the witnesses think they saw a white guy in a hoodie, it becomes racially motivated. Maybe he's a crackhead. Maybe he's a crazy person. Maybe uh, he's hallucinating. Or maybe it's mistaken identity. Because statistically, there's a group that kills the least amount of people in this country. It's called Asians of every group. There's nine groups on the criminal scale that are the least violent. They're all Asian. Then there's one group after that. Whites are the next most nonviolent group. And then it goes down the line. Hispanics. And then you go right down there to the bottom. It's black folks. And that's a statistic you can't lie about. Everybody knows that. Black folks kill each other more than anybody else, and I want it to stop. I'm not putting that statistic out to be mean. It's just a fact. So you've got all these black leaders that come out every time some white person kills a black person, 
and every time it's unjustified whether it is or not and then when it looks like okay it's a white guy did it everybody runs with it and says he's a white supremacist and then when it turns out it's a black guy and it's drug related and it's mistaken identity with people whacked out of their brain at 6 30 in the morning shooting up a car because it looks like somebody they don't like the media tried to cover it up and just say hey they caught the guy don't worry about it move along but twitter and others noticed what i noticed and by just a few hours ago on sunday evening mainstream media had to report oh mistaken identity it was a drug shooting uh, they thought it was other drug dealers uh, move along and now the story will end but the story isn't over ladies and gentlemen we have big articles by paul joseph watson and by kit daniels that are up on infowars.com that lay all of this out and show the fbi's own crime statistics national crime statistics you name it proving that the most dangerous person to a black person in this country is either a Planned Parenthood employee, who are a bunch of white supremacists, by the way, that's who set it up, or other black people. And so if I'm doing something wrong in my life or my community's got a problem, I want to take ownership of it so I can fix it. And so if the black community was out there every time a black child got shot, getting upset and doing GoFundMes and going after who did it, trying to clean the streets up, I'd be behind it. And I'm behind supporting this young lady and her GoFundMe for her family and her memory. And it's a tragedy. She's a sweet little girl. I have a 20-month-old daughter, a 10-year-old daughter, and a 14-year-old daughter. Tears my guts out. Makes me have nightmares. That's why I was following the story. But now we learn that they used her death to try to divide America, to try to turn black Americans against white Americans to believe there's an epidemic. You know, thoroughly convinced that the killing of Jasmine Barnes was race related. We believe that there is a white supremacist element in the area that needs to be trotted out, found and brought to justice, he said. We heard similar things out of Sheila Jackson Lee, and we saw all these rallies and man, I wish we could see 2,500 black people or white people or anybody for that matter, show up when I go protest Planned Parenthood in South Austin and East Austin where right here in Austin, more than half the abortions they do, even though Austin's only like 15% black, are black people. See, that's the ultimate litmus test. I don't want to kill black people in the womb. I do want to slap race baiting new Black Panther Party people that are basically black KKK upside the head when they sit there and say whites are inherently devils, whites are inherently evil, whites need to be exterminated. That's a bunch of Hitler crap. Just because it's coming out of some black guy's mouth doesn't mean it isn't the same crap we heard out of Hitler and other people that caused all these giant wars. It's ideology of freedom and liberty and justice we need. And that's what's going to save little girls like Jasmine Barnes. She wasn't just murdered by somebody clearly involved in drug operations in mistaken identity of that car. Now they've stolen her identity in the media and claimed a white supremacist killed her to try to make sure we're more divided in this nation and try to make sure the real problems of the drugs flooding these communities and this giant prison industrial complex that Trump's trying to dial back. This is all a distraction from that, and it makes me angry. And I'll be honest with you. It scares me that ABC News and CBS and CNN would all be in lockstep when you've got a national story, one of the top stories, who's the white supremacist killed the little black girl? And they got such a news blackout, no pun intended, on this whole deal that in I, I live two and a half hours from Houston. It wasn't on the news here. We didn't hear about it yesterday. I had to see national news this morning and notice that they didn't say who his name was. And I'm like, wait, if they arrest somebody, they mugshot him. They indict him. Now, later CNN went in and added the names and changed the headlines and did all that. By the time I got down here this afternoon for the show, it all been changed. But that just shows how they'll do anything they can get away with. And that's why they don't want Infowars.com. That's why they don't want Newswars.com. That's why they don't want things like DrudgeReport.com. That's why they don't want Daily Caller. They don't want anything out there that's going to be watching and challenging their narrative. If the killer of this little girl turned out to be some dirtbag white supremacist, I would come out and decry it and say it was wrong and point out what had happened. But instead, 
the corporate media just wanted to say it was a white person to create division, and then once it turned out it wasn't, they didn't correct it until the public forced them to. And that's the good news, is the people are aware of what's going on. It's crazy. You know if it had been a white supremacist or a white guy, period, that killed her, it could have been just a crackhead, drughead, you know, mistaken identity of another drug dealer, whatever, because most crime is drug-related. You know it'd be that white face up there and everything about him and what he said on social media and any social media he posted on would be in big trouble. But because it's a black man that did it, killing another black person, even still most of the reportage, they just updated it at the bottom and didn't tell the public anything. It's so sad to see this. So in summation, this is a tragedy that very evil forces have seized upon to create more division in America and distract from the real problems in these communities that I want to see healed. Here's a USA Today article. Mistaken identity shooting murder charge filed in death of Jasmine Barnes 7 in Houston. And then, again, you have to dig deep in this until you ever find out it's a black guy that did it, and they don't even show you an image. But if it was a white person, they would show you the image to rub it in and make it racial and to make it as if we're all in a war with each other. That's in the WikiLeaks where Hillary is telling her operatives, I want racial division in America. I want class warfare. This is what the Democratic Party does. And I'm tired of it. It's disgusting. But again, the good news is the public was here. They were watching. And after a day, the media was at least forced to admit okay, the guy in the sketch isn't who did it. But then almost all the stories won't show you who did do it because they want to make it racial and have that in the back of your mind. It's incredible. You know, when InfoWars makes mistakes, we'll correct it. And the news always goes, Jones admits he's fake and lied. No, when I make a mistake and we correct, which is rare, we tell you. And then the mainstream media that lies, they tell more lies and say that we say that we've lied. These people are factories of deception and evil. They are the establishment. They're mad that Trump's pulling troops out of war zones, something Obama promised to do, never did. They're mad he's doing criminal justice reform so black people don't get triple the sentences for drugs that whites and others get. That's everything black activist groups ever called for, but almost no coverage of it. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Party and the Globals are trying to keep black people on the plantation. That's it for this special transmission. I'll be back live here in just a few minutes, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, with the normal Sunday transmission. But I wanted to come in specifically and talk about this. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's not end this yet. One last point, the most important point here in my notes. No matter if you're black, no matter if you're white, no matter if you're Hispanic or Asian, old or young, this is sweet family. And they're in a lot of pain right now. And they've been used and abused. So I'm glad there's a GoFundMe account. And I'm glad people are donating to help her family and help her memory and help take care of these good people. So I'm asking all the listeners to go to the GoFundMe uh, for Jasmine Barnes and to make a donation today. And to make a donation to the victims of crime in general and to fallen police officer funds in your area as well. God bless the memory and the soul of Jasmine. And please support her, folks. They're going to need a lot more than $79,000 to recover from this. Thank you.